Blackbeard is an octopus. Well, not literally, but today I'm gonna prove to you why he ate the mythical fish fish fruit model kraken. You may have heard of this theory before, but copious amounts of new details have emerged since my first video. We wonder what his true trump card is, how he utilizes multiple devil fruits, and why he's not afraid to sail on a pair of logs. Well, today I have a simple yet shocking answer to resolve all of the mysteries surrounding Blackbeard. But before we jump into that, I upload three times a week, so please subscribe to keep up with the most evil channel on YouTube. In order to really dive deep and get an understanding as to why Blackbeard is indeed an octopus, we need a quick but much needed recap. Looking at the Jolly Roger for the Blackbeard Pirates, it holds interesting clues in the nature of Blackbeard himself. First of all, the Blackbeard Pirate flag features three skulls. I believe these three skulls ties in with the fact that in real life, octopuses have three hearts to support their body. Blackbeard gaining Whitebeard's fruit during Marineford leads me to believe he was only able to do so because he has three hearts. If Blackbeard ate a devil fruit of a mythical kraken or some variation of an octopus, I am sure that his lineage factor was altered in the process. We see this through Vinsmoke Judge, who experimented with lineage factors in order to artificially manufacture humans through Germa 66, or even simply through Kaido, where Kaido's body has tough scales even without him being in dragon form. And the reason why Kaido has these scales at all times is because his DNA was altered, in other words, his lineage factor was altered. Now moving back to the flag of the Blackbeard Pirates, it also features 8 bone ends to the 3 skulls. This yet again ties in with octopuses, because octopuses in the real world do indeed have 8 tentacles. So therefore, Blackbeard's flag having 3 skulls and 8 bones is a reference to the 3 hearts and 8 tentacles that octopuses have. Blackbeard wouldn't be the first character with some type of aquatic devil fruit either. Kaido himself is confirmed to have a dragon fruit in the fish fish family. They even refer to Kaido as the strongest creature in land, sea, and air, which is funny to think about considering devil fruit users should be weak in water compared to the sea kings. Yet Kaido is stronger than them while being underwater, most likely due to his devil fruit being in the fish fish family. Now back to Blackbeard again. Octopuses in the real world have unique and notable abilities, the first one being ink. Octopuses will shoot black ink to disorientate their target and to get away. Blackbeard targeted the Yami Yami no Mi, aka the Darkness Fruit, most likely because it's the most powerful Logia Devil Fruit in the story. But I think it acts as a double entendre, because an octopus like Blackbeard wielding the Darkness Fruit resembles a lot like ink. I can imagine Blackbeard in a full Kraken form, with all 8 tentacles shooting darkness bombs, and him using all 8 tentacles slamming the Gura Gura no Mi. The second notable ability of octopuses in the real world is their ability to camouflage. We can easily apply this to Blackbeard, as he blended into the Whitebeard pirates for many years while hiding a sinister plan. Sure Blackbeard is a Yonko now, but the world still doesn't understand the huge yet looming threat that is Blackbeard. Shanks tried warning Whitebeard of Blackbeard, but Whitebeard didn't listen. It also seems like the Gorosei aren't taking Blackbeard that seriously either, so the pirate Shanks is warning the Gorosei about is probably Blackbeard. I think it's safe to assume that Blackbeard is being set up to be one of the endgame bosses to the Pirate King. And in the real world, can you guess what the biggest boss is for pirates throughout the course of history? The Kraken. All throughout multiple religions, countries, and mythologies such as Norse, the Kraken was the absolute most feared enemy of pirates. Shanks himself is based off the Norse god Tyr, and one of the most powerful creatures in Norse mythology is the Kraken. Considering that this is a story of pirates, I am certain that a Kraken will have a much bigger role than Surume did. And this Kraken that will play that role in this pirate story will be Blackbeard. And that's about it for the recap, so let's move on to the loads of new evidence that's been uncovered. One of the newest pieces of evidence that's been discovered was actually featured on the cover of a One Piece chapter. A One Piece reader sent in a request to Oda, and that request was an octopus compiling Usopp's adventures onto the tales of Usopp. So for chapter 1025, Oda responded with a very shocking cover. We have Usopp at the forefront, but just behind him to his right is an octopus. Let's take note how this octopus wears the same exact type of hat that Blackbeard did in his flashback. I swear it's 
not the bias in me, but it was strikingly similar the first time I saw it. Another thing to note is that this octopus is holding a book so he can write the tales of Usopp. I believe we could tie this in with Blackbeard, because in the SBS for volume 82, Oda told us that Blackbeard's hobby is historical research. What candidate would be better? This octopus is jotting down Usopp's history to compile the tales of Usopp. An octopus that loves history research will surely have it come to fruition. Now if you're still not convinced, take a look at Usopp's hat in the cover. If you feel like that logo is familiar, it's because it is. Every single one of Blackbeard's ships has that same exact Jolly Roger minus the long nose because it's Usopp's edition. So now tell me in the comments, how convinced are you? Let's talk about Surume, the giant octopus we saw at Fishman Island. At some point, Hody Jones brought Surume the Kraken to Fishman Island from the North Pole by force and proclaimed for him to be his slave. Hody even threatened to kill the Kraken if he did not obey. I believe Oda choosing the North Pole specifically was a calculated decision. Octopuses in the real world come from colder regions. So the reason Oda mentioned that Surume was brought from the North Pole is to draw that real life connection. Now we can take this connection that Oda has drawn and apply it to Blackbeard. In SBS Volume 63, Oda drew the seven warlords of the sea as children. And for Blackbeard's drawing, he put Blackbeard in the snow. This is hinting that Blackbeard is from a colder region of the world, further drawing a parallel between him and octopuses. Even before Luffy and Co made it to Drum Kingdom, they learned that Blackbeard and Co ransacked and destroyed the place. But we must consider, why was Blackbeard even in Drum Kingdom? When Blackbeard left the Whitebeard Pirates, he was in the New World. So is Drum Kingdom, this snow country, the home of Blackbeard, or is there some sort of special connection going on? And speaking of snow, Luffy and Buggy both pointed out that people from snow countries never sleep. More specifically, Buggy mentions that Blackbeard never sleeps. Once again, we can draw a connection to the real world. Octopuses sleep in bursts and they can go long periods of time without sleeping. It's even said that octopuses spend less than 1% of their life in active sleep. So therefore, with the topics of Blackbeard's origin and the sleeping patterns, we can understand that Blackbeard is paralleling Surume and octopuses in real life. During Marine Ford War, Marco has a statement saying that Blackbeard has a weird body. This leads us to wonder, how and why is Marco even pointing this out to us? Does Marco know something about Blackbeard's lineage factor? Does Marco know about Blackbeard's three hearts, or sleeping, or possibly even tentacles? What makes this funny is that we can actually see that there's a dude wearing an octopus on his head, asking if it's possible to even have two devil fruits. The icing on this cake is that even Panda Man is making an appearance while while this is happening. Moving on to the moment Blackbeard is obtaining Whitebeard's devil fruit, Shiryu is shown asking if it fails, are they splitting up? My answer to this is just because Blackbeard tells his crew he may be able to have multiple devil fruits because of his hearts, that doesn't mean they have 100% faith. Because as the Gorose stated, Blackbeard is the very first person to have multiple devil fruits. Just like I am, Blackbeard probably theorized that having multiple hearts will allow you to have multiple devil fruits. Because after all, all, Blackbeard did grow up reading the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. He memorized all of the fruits in it in order to locate the Yami Yami no Mi, a great addition to the Kraken. And this is why Blackbeard seemed so confident when he was going for Whitebeard's Devil Fruit. On the topic of Blackbeard's body, we need to address the weaponry on his body. So Blackbeard always carries three pistols with him, which is very interesting because just like Zoro, he only has two arms. Unless Blackbeard can three gun style them, he would need more more arms to actually use all of them. So this leads me to consider, is Blackbeard using a tentacle to shoot his third gun in dire situations? Blackbeard would prefer to keep this octopus devil fruit a secret, but if he reveals it in dire situations, it's not the worst thing in the world. For an example, Shanks told us that Blackbeard was the one to give the scar and that Blackbeard is no joke. Did Blackbeard reveal the octopus secret to Shanks? Did Blackbeard pull a sneaky little attack on Shanks in order to leave that scar? And octopuses as a whole, they totally fit Blackbeard's personality. Octopuses are highly intelligent and adaptable. They are ambush styled hunters and opportunists, which fits perfectly with Blackbeard's personality. Throughout the story, even during the Thatch incident, Blackbeard has been played up to be an opportunist and planner. 
He killed his crewmate for a powerful fruit. He gave up Ace to become a warlord. He abused his warlord position to enter the gates of justice. He appeared last second at Marine Ford to kill Whitebeard. He dipped out of Marine Ford in order to avoid a fight with Akainu. He sent Burgess to Dressrosa to get the Maramara no Mi. He even trained Burgess to be a sly man like himself in order to infiltrate Baltigo. The list goes on. Blackbeard is very methodical in his decisions, so it would make sense he would hide this Kraken devil fruit even from the Whitebeard pirates. Now moving back to Blackbeard's body and his powers, let's talk about Jaya again. Back in the day, the Blackbeard pirates were chasing Luffy towards the knockup streams. Now I believe it was stated that the knockup streams caused whirlpools, but I find it ironic how in Kraken mythology, they say that Krakens can create whirlpools. I doubt Blackbeard created some or any of those whirlpools, but I feel like it's a small yet subtle reference to Krakens again. If Blackbeard is indeed an octopus, people are definitely going to draw this connection and call it super foreshadowing. On the subject of Blackbeard chasing Luffy, Blackbeard and co actually had their ship crash. Which by the way, his ship is literally a pair of logs. Blackbeard might be cocky, but this does not discredit all the buildup Oda has done for the seas in One Piece. They are ridden with weather phenomenons, as well as huge creatures that could easily spell trouble for a few wooden sticks. His ship doesn't even have enclosures. Like why is Blackbeard not afraid of the ocean? How did he truly survive with his crew when that ship crashed? Is it because he has a kraken form? Did he use his tentacles to pull his crewmates out of the water? Now I do have a few more points as far as Blackbeard as an octopus goes, but they're definitely on the subtle and tinfoil side. These are definitely not the strongest arguments, but they're fun to think about. So let's think. Let's start with the Pirates of the Caribbean. Davy Jones is an octopus man that was inflicted by a curse. Is Blackbeard an octopus man inflicted by a devil fruit curse as well? And does that make Luffy Captain Jack Sparrow? The sea monster from chapter 1 is known as the Lord of the Coast, and the Lord of the Coast is actually inspired by Float Sam and Jet Sam, the eels from Disney's Little Mermaid. Yeah this is cute, but the final villain of Disney's Little Mermaid is Ursula, an octopus slash kraken. Luffy's last meal before reaching Jaya is actually Octopus, aka Tokoyaki, and then Luffy just so happens to meet Blackbeard shortly after. When Blackbeard is attempting to join the Whitebeard pirates, Blackbeard drops to his knees begging them, but one of the members declines, telling Blackbeard that they ain't no fishermen. <laughs> when Luffy enters the New World, he actually befriended a Kraken, and now when Luffy is exiting the New World, he will be defeating a Kraken. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. I have two videos on screen ready for you to watch, and I dare you to click one before this video ends. Bye! Have you ever wondered why the darkness from the Yami Yami no Mi nullifies devil fruit powers just like the ocean does? It is without a doubt because the darkness from the Yami Yami no Mi is based on the darkness of the deep sea. And that's why Oda hides an abundance of clues in plain sight. Like the fact that Blackbeard's Koro Uzu attack literally translates to darkness water. All of the symbolism of the Yami Yami no Mi being connected to water is purely intentional because Blackbeard is just like Luffy in more ways than I can count. But the most important one is that Luffy ate the sun god fruit disguised as a regular fruit, much like how Blackbeard ate the rain god fruit disguised as a regular fruit. This theory video today is filled with concrete facts and evidence that is going to blow your mind. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to never miss the best One Piece theory videos on all of YouTube. So the first thing we need to address is the nature of Zoan Devil Fruits. In chapter 1044, we saw the Godose have a conversation amongst themselves in which they regarded the Zoan Devil Fruits as having a will of their own. At first, they tried to make it seem like an idea, but one of the Godose jumped in and they were like, no, this is pure facts. And yes, the context of this conversation was regarding the Sun God Nika Fruit, the one that Luffy ate, but we need to ask ourselves, does this apply to Devil Fruits outside of the context? And the answer is yes, but there is only one other 
favorite devil fruit that this kind of idea applies to. In chapter 440, when Blackbeard was fighting Ace, he told Ace that the ability chose him. This is one of those nuggets of gold that Oda hides in the story, those little facts, those little information that end up being so big in the future, hundreds of chapters later in advance. There's a lot of examples of this. For an example, Luffy telling Momonosuke he's not a Zoan. Oda loves to throw in these little details, these little clues that make up the bigger picture of what's going on. So when Blackbeard tells Ace, the ability chose me, this is Oda's way of implying that Blackbeard's Yami Yami no Mi is actually a Zoan. And we could even apply this to Luffy. How did the sun god Nika fruit make its way to Luffy? How did it end up on the counter? How did Luffy eat it? Again, Oda already gave us the answer. Zoans have a will of their own. These fruits make their way to the person who is most worthy of eating the devil fruit. Now, I kind of want to branch off for a second. Let's talk about the gods of One Piece. During Skypiea, we were prompted by a page talking about the sun god, rain god, forest god, earth god. And at the time, we kind of overlooked it. We thought it was just the lore of Skypiea, the lore of Shandora. We'll come to find out during the story time and time again, we were shown and told that there is a sun god by the name of Nika. Now, this puts into jeopardy. This puts into question, what about the three other gods? If there can be a sun god Nika, then there should be a forest god, a rain god, and an earth god. Like Luffy did turn out to be sun god Nika, he turned out to be the sun god. So why couldn't other characters in the story be gods too? Like keep in mind, even the Gorosei is catching wind of this. They know that the Gomo Gomo no Mi was renamed from the sun god Nika fruit, and they know that Luffy ate the fruit, making Luffy a sun god. So again, it is fair to argue that those three other named gods will be characters in the story. And I would even go as far as to argue that Blackbeard is labeled as the rain god. Now, one of my biggest beliefs about Blackbeard and more specifically the Yami Yami no Mi is that this fruit is hiding really important facts and details. Like for an example, I don't believe the Yami Yami no Mi is regular darkness. I believe it is deep sea darkness. And we see when people have sea prism stone cuffs on and when they're being drowned, their powers are nullified just like the Yami Yami no Mi. Why would Oda add these two little items in the story if they weren't connected? And that's my point. The Yami Yami no Mi's darkness is deep sea darkness specifically. Now there's certain attacks by Blackbeard that we can analyze to make this case even stronger. For an example, Blackbeard's attack Kuro Uzu literally translates to darkness water. At this point, it is right in front of our face. This double fruit acts just like water. There's powers named after water it is connected to the sea. One other thing that kind of popped into my head is we all know that Blackbeard versus Ace is almost like light versus dark. But if Blackbeard is the god of the rain, then maybe this is also fire versus water. Now we can actually bridge the gap between god of the rain and this whole kind of aquatic, this whole kind of water thing with Blackbeard's fruit. And that is because ocean water gets carried up into the atmosphere and that's what creates rain. Very simple concept, very symbolic, very Oda-like. So it seems like the Yami Yami no Mi is the god out of the rain and this is why it acts like water nullifying devil fruit powers. Now a lot of people will say that Blackbeard's devil fruit is based off gravity but again let's take a look at the Kuro Uzu attack. We know through the straw hat journey to Fishman Island gravity underwater is a real thing and honestly it's eerily similar to the Yami Yami no Mi. The darkness nullifying powers pulling you down like gravity Blackbeard's Yami Yami no Mi is going to be based on the depth of the ocean. Now one cool thing is that recent One Piece chapters add to this whole idea even further. Vigabung tells us that Mother Nature cursed Devil Fruits and that's basically why those power users end up drowning and they're weak to water. Which again, this is how the Yami Yami no Mi acts. So if the rain is connected to the sea, perhaps the personification of Mother Nature or the sea in One Piece is the Yami Yami no Mi. Now one cool tidbit piece of information for the Yami Yami no Mi is it's not like a traditional Logia fruit where you become intangible. If you look at Kazaru's Glint Glint fruit, Aokiji's Ice Ice fruit, or even Aki Inu's magma magma fruit, those guys are turning intangible. But why doesn't the Yami Yami no Mi do the same thing? The Yami Yami no Mi behaves much differently from a traditional Logia, and I believe Occam's Razor is the case for this curious question. When faced with two opposing explanations for the same set of evidence, our minds will usually prefer the explanation that makes the fewest assumptions. Meaning the simplest explanation as to why the Yami Yami no Mi doesn't act like a Logia is because it's not a Logia, it's a Zoan. Just like 
like how his second side of the same coin, Luffy, actually had a Zoan fruit and it behaved very weird throughout the story, the same case will be for Blackbeard. Like, just take a look at Luffy, just take a look at the beginning of the story. Ever since chapter one, we analyzed the appearance and wondered how it ended up in Luffy's hands. Oda then showed us in chapter 440 what Blackbeard's fruit looks like, and both its appearance and journey seems to be eerily similar to Luffy's. Like, look at these two fruits. Do they not look similar? Now let's quickly analyze these two devil fruits and how they got to their respective users. We know that Shanks attacked the world government for the Gomo Gomo no Mi, but we have to question why. Shanks was raised in the Roger Pirates that was a hockey man culture, and Shanks grew old enough to make his own crew, which was again a hockey man culture. Shanks himself does not have a devil fruit. Everything about Shanks in his life is hockey. So why would he go out of his way to steal the Gomo Gomo no Mi unless he knew what it was, unless he knew what it meant? And then if we take a look at the Whitebeard Pirates, we know that they attacked quote unquote random people for the Yami Yami no Mi. It seems to be the same situation as Shanks. It seems like they were just attacking random people, they were attacking these ships, and they got these legendary devil fruits. Now I'm gonna throw a curveball at you that you weren't expecting. Perhaps back in the day, previous to Blackbeard eating the Yami Yami no Mi, Shanks and Blackbeard were fighting over both or one of these fruits. If they both look very similar and they're both gods of One Piece, it seems like this is something that Oda would set up. Like honestly, they look so similar to each other that you could mix them up, you could be mistaken. And so could the characters in One Piece be. So now this is where we come full circle. Luffy's Gomu Gomu no Mi is the sun god in disguise and Blackbeard's Yami Yami no Mi is the rain god in disguise. Now seeing how Luffy's basically the embodiment of Joy Boy or sun god Nika because he ate that fruit, surely the same kind of thing would apply to Blackbeard. As you guys know, I was the one that originated the Blackbeard is an octopus theory through multiple videos. If you're curious to learn more, I have a link at the top right of the screen. But perhaps this is where it comes full circle again. With Blackbeard potentially being the god of the rain, you could easily connect this to the ocean. In chapter 604, Caribou says the legendary demon that roams the vast ocean, never tiring of slaughter it leaves in its wake, the enemy of all humanity, that beast is the Kraken. So perhaps the Yami Yami no Mi being the god of the rain is personified through an octopus or a Kraken, and this is exactly what's going on with Blackbeard. We also learned from Hody that Krakens are a legendary species, so therefore there's multiple of them in the One Piece story. So perhaps when Sun God Nika became a fruit, or a dog became a fruit, somewhere out there a Kraken or an octopus did the same thing and became a devil fruit. I think that'd be pretty interesting and likely, considering that Kashigami the snake was called a Sun God. So again, maybe somewhere out there in the One Piece world, there is a large Kraken called a Rain God. This would have Blackbeard and Luffy mirror each other in another way, as if there's not already a plethora of ways that they parallel each other. Now I have two more mind-blowing facts that will leave you sold on this God of the Rain Kraken theory, so stay with me. Most of you guys know that Jolly Rogers and One Piece are basically symbolic of the captain. The Straw Hat Pirates have a Jolly Roger featuring a Straw Hat. The Fire Tink Pirates have a Jolly Roger featuring a castle. All of the flags, all of the Jolly Rogers in One Piece are symbolic of the captain. Now we have to wonder, why does Blackbeard's flag have three skulls and eight bones? I believe this is the biology of an octopus since they have three hearts and eight tentacles. This could easily explain why Blackbeard's able to have multiple devil fruits because of his altered lineage factor from eating a devil fruit. Now this gets even deeper. Let's take a look at Blackbeard's current bounty in the story. It is 3 billion 996 million berries. Now in Japanese culture, they have something called gorowase, which is basically number puns. It is not exclusive to One Piece, but Oda uses it all the time. This is a staple in Japan. Lots of authors play around with number puns. Now if you break down Blackbeard's bounty, you get 3996 or San Kokoro. Now the mind blowing thing is when you translate San, you get three, and when you translate Kokoro, you get hearts, three, hearts. Oda is hiding this in plain sight right in front of you all. The Yami Yami no Mi is the god of the rain and the personification of it is a kraken. Warning, this is not a drill. Today I'm going to undoubtedly prove to you that Luffy's based on Hanuman, Joy Boy's based on Rama, Emu's based on Ravana, and Blackbeard is based on Three Sidas. We're also going to be talking about the final war of One Piece and how it's going to unfold. Like this video is actually beyond mind-blowing so make sure you have a bucket nearby to catch your head. So a good foundation to 
to this theory is that Monkey D. Luffy is based on a Hindu monkey god named Hanuman. Now the popular belief is that Luffy is based on Sun Wukong, but it's important to know that Sun Wukong is based on Hanuman. And the differences between Hanuman and Sun Wukong are important because you can apply them to Luffy, but you can't apply them to Sun Wukong. If I can get you to believe that this relationship and inspiration exists, you're going to see exactly how the final war of One Piece unfolds. Now there's over a hundred similarities between Luffy and Hanuman, and I really don't want to drag on this video. So I'm going to show you five of the strongest reasons why Luffy is definitely based on Hanuman. One, in chapter 1048, Luffy does an attack against Kaido called Bajrang Gun. Bajrang is another name for Hanuman. They're basically the exact same thing. So Hanuman has already directly impacted the story of One Piece. Two, both Hanuman and Luffy tried eating the sun, thinking it was a regular fruit. Three, both Hanuman and Luffy are monkey kings who can stretch in large parts of their body and be immune to electricity. Four, Hanuman is the son of Vayu. And in Hindu mythology, Vayu is a legendary man known as the Lord of the Winds, just like Dragon. And five, he's also the son of Kaysidi. Kaysidi is a monkey chief who once went to a holy location to save holy saints by beating down a great monster with his bare fist. And Kaysidi was then labeled as a hero for that. Like I said, there are so many similarities between Luffy and Hanuman, but I'm not going to be here all day. Today, we're going to talk about Blackbeard, Emu, and the final war. So now that we've established how Luffy is based on Hanuman, we can finally talk about Blackbeard. One of the biggest enemies that Hanuman has ever faced was an anti-god named Three Sidas. Right off the bat, you can see that Three Sidas and Blackbeard's flag is the same exact thing. Three heads facing the same exact directions. Now, Three Sidas is an Ashura in Hindu religion, and this should sound familiar to you because Zoro has an attack called Ashura in the story. So Blackbeard being based on an Ashura is very likely given Ashuras are already in the story. And you can even see that Zoro's Ashura attack is foreshadowing Blackbeard and his true nature. Now, Three Sidas is an Ashura with three heads and each of them have a name. So Mapitha, Surapitha, and Anada. This could very well imply that Blackbeard is the combination of three different people. This is definitely not a new theory, but given that Blackbeard is based on three Sidas, this gives a lot of credence to that theory. A lot of people point back to chapter 225 when Luffy and Zoro first met Blackbeard. They walked away from Blackbeard saying there's more than one. The simple explanation is that they could be referring to his crew given that they did encounter Doc Q earlier in the arc and them being chased by the Blackbeard pirates would treat that scene as foreshadowing. But the way that this scene is portrayed seems like it's more mysterious than that. And I find it ironic how out of everyone in the entire story, it takes Zoro to say it's more than just him when Zoro is an Ashra user and Blackbeard's probably an Ashra itself. If Blackbeard is based on a three-headed demon, it explains why Zoro and Luffy said there's more than one. We also can't ignore how it seems as if Blackbeard has three different personalities, which yet again connects to the lore of Three Sidas. It is told that one head was responsible for drinking, one head observes his surroundings, and with the last head, he used it to read the four Vedas. Vedas literally translates to knowledge, but these religious texts originated in ancient India and are the oldest scriptures of Hinduism. Now, there's actually four Vedas. The Rig Veda, the Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, and Artharva Veda. Are the four Vedas in Hinduism an inspiration for the four red poneglyphs in One Piece? If they are, then this means that one of Blackbeard's souls is able to read the poneglyphs, which completely changes the dynamic of One Piece. In a good or bad way, I don't know, but the fact that Three Sidas has three different dynamics dealing with him, and this explains what's going on with Blackbeard throughout the story. Especially if you take into account his flag. Like, every single crew in One Piece has a flag that directly correlates with their captain. Luffy's flag has a straw hat because Luffy wears a straw hat. The Revolutionary Army has a dragon because the leader is named Dragon. And Blackbeard has three skulls because he is based on the three-headed demon named Three Sidas. We can also refer back to chapter 966, where Buggy says that Blackbeard has never slept in his life. This would imply that Blackbeard's sleeping quirk has always been a thing, so he must have been born that way and not turned that way. If Blackbeard was born as three different souls combined into one, this explains why he never sleeps. He rotates between the three different souls and when they're inactive, they're basically sleeping, they're basically resting. So rather than Blackbeard shutting down and going to sleep, he switches to another head, he switches to another soul, which is why he's never slept in his life. We can also take a look at Cavendish, which I believe is foreshadowing Blackbeard and his three personalities, souls, or heads. Cavendish suffers from a split personality known as Hakuba, and this is only active when his dominant personality is sleeping. So saying that Blackbeard has three different souls, three different personalities, and one takes over when the others are sleeping fits into the story of One Piece perfectly. It fits into the story organically. I also want to point out how during Marineford, Marco says that Blackbeard eating another fruit is only made possible because of his weird body. If we know Blackbeard has a weird body and he's been weird ever since he was born, this implies that it wasn't a devil fruit that made him the way he is. So theories such as 
the yami yami no mi allowing him to have multiple devil fruits is simply not true. Blackbeard was born different. If he was born as Siamese twins, tripled personality, or tripled souls, that explains why he will have three devil fruits, presumably a Zoan type devil fruit in the future. We also know that Vegapunk is hundreds of years advanced and that he even knows how to make devil fruits. So it's possible that Vegapunk created a human that defies the golden rule of devil fruits that one man may eat one devil fruit. Vegapunk and Blackbeard could have been separated at some point, but essentially Blackbeard is a Vegapunk experiment gone right. Or simply, Blackbeard was the outcome of three combined souls. Oda has already played with souls a lot, just like a big mom and Brooke. I also want to point out a picture of young Blackbeard that Oda once drew, because we could see Blackbeard crying. A picture tells a thousand words, and we can actually use this picture to support the theory. We could say that Blackbeard was having a hard upbringing because he did not know how to live with or control the three heads or three souls in his body. But that's enough theorizing on Blackbeard. If you have more details and evidence about him having three souls, comment down below. But regardless, there's more than enough evidence to say that Luffy's based on Hanuman and Blackbeard is based on three Sidas. Now let's actually turn our attention to chapter 908, where Emu is shown to be in a beautiful garden. It's important to think about how this is in a garden of all places. I want you to hold on to this idea for later. When Emu is shown in this garden, they are stabbing four different posters. The posters being Luffy, Blackbeard, Shirahoshi, and Vivi. Now there's endless theories as to what this could mean, like some people think that they are the four gods of One Piece, but today I'm here to explain to you exactly what it means. So like we said, Luffy's based on Hanuman, which implies Blackbeard is based on Three Sidas. So the two remaining posters are Vivi and Shirahoshi. Do you think we could connect and correlate this with Hanuman and his lore? Spoiler alert, we can. So let's start with Shirahoshi. In Hindu religion, Hanuman had a friend named Suva Namacha, and this friend was a mermaid princess that Hanuman met underwater. I also want to point out that this friend of Hanuman, the mermaid princess, lived under a rock bridge. We can easily connect this story of Hanuman and Suva Namacha to One Piece. Luffy had a friend named Shirahoshi, and this friend was a mermaid princess that Luffy met underwater. And Shirahoshi, of all places, lives under a rock bridge called the Red Line. Clearly, Luffy and Beyond is inspired by Hindu religion, but it doesn't end there. The final poster is Vivi. Now, this one's a little bit tricky, but Vivi's based on Sita. And in order for this to make sense to you, I need to explain two different powerful deities. Now, the first one is named Rama, and the second one is named Ravana. Now, let's start with the first one named Rama. I definitely believe that Joy Boy is based on Rama. In Hindu religion, Rama's considered as the supreme being, and Rama also sits in the heart of Hanuman. Now, let's note that Rama had a wife named Sita. There is a great event called the War of Lanka, and I'll be diving into this later. But during this war, Rama had his wife Sita kidnapped by the other deity named Ravana. Ravana was a demonic king of an army and was portrayed to be an evil character. Now let's break this down into One Piece terms so this makes sense. Rama, aka Joy Boy, had a great war against Ravana, aka Emu. We do know that Joy Boy died, but we also know that Joy Boy to some extent lives in the heart of Luffy. Being that one, Vivi's a Nefertari, two, the Nefertaris refused to join the world government, and three, Emu brought Vivi's poster to the Gorosei, I am arguing that Luffy's going to follow in the footsteps of the War of Lanka. Luffy will act as both Rama and Hanuman by fighting against Ravana to rescue Sita. It's also possible that Vivi's a reincarnation of Joy Boy's wife who refused to join the world government because we already know that the Nefertari family betrayed the world government 800 years ago by refusing to join the world government. Shirahoshi's already established as a reincarnation and Luffy to some extent is a reincarnation of Joy Boy. I won't get into the semantics of what a reincarnation means or what it is, but you see what I'm trying to say. Oh yeah, fun fact, Ravana held Sita captive in a garden. Remember that garden I was telling you to remember? Yeah, I find it ironic that Emu had Vivi's poster and was stabbing it in the garden. Maybe Emu will bring Vivi to that garden to make the parallel the exact same as the Hindu mythology. But anyways, now we understand the four posters that Emu had in the garden. Luffy aka Hanuman, Blackbeard aka Three Sidas, Shirahoshi aka Suva Namacha, and Vivi aka Sita. So Emu aka Ravana decided to grab Vivi aka Sita's poster and bring it to the Gorosei to kidnap Vivi. I also want to point out chapter 906. Emu visited what appears to be a giant straw hat and many people believe that it was the hat of Joy Boy. Well, you know what? I agree. It would make sense that Ravana brought a picture of Hanuman to the hat of Rama. Maybe Ravana realized the deep connection between Hanuman and Rama. In other words, Emu brought a picture of Luffy to the hat of Joy Boy because Emu realized the deep connection between Luffy and Joy Boy. Could Ravana, aka Emu, be luring out Hanuman, aka Luffy, by kidnapping Sita, aka Vivi? Now it's time to talk about a super famous event in Hindu religion called the War of Lanka. I believe Oda's heavily inspired by this due to all the connections we've already drawn from Luffy to Blackbeard to Shirahoshi to Vivi. 
Lanka and Hindu epics access the island fortress capital of the legendary king Ravana. Ravana, aka Emu, lives in Lanka, aka Marijwa. If we put this in One Piece terms, it does make sense and it does fit the story, given that Marijwa is based on Lanka. And given that this huge war took place in Lanka, it does fit the popular belief that the final war of One Piece takes place at Marijwa. Now in the war at Lanka, there's a monkey army led by Rama fighting against Ravana. Being that Joy Boy is based on Rama, he could have lost against Emu in the 20 kingdoms, but is returning in the form of Luffy. The War of Lanka states that Rama, aka Luffy, defeated Ravana, aka Emu, and managed to rescue the kidnapped wife Sita, aka Vivi. Now as far as the powers of Ravana goes, he was made invincible and had the power to assume any form he wished, from men to mountains to death itself. He was so powerful that he could cause earthquakes and storms. This is quite interesting because Kaido is made to seem invincible, and people like Bon Clay can take any form. And we've seen death itself in the form of a Grim Reaper, and people like Whitebeard can cause earthquakes. So a battle against a deity like this in One Piece makes sense and it can fit into the story organically. Luffy fighting an invincible character that can take any forms is kind of like Luffy versus Katakuri, but turned up to the max. But this is not the only great battle that took place during the War of Lanka. So during this war, Hanuman fights and beheads three Siras. Now I don't think that Luffy's gonna behead and kill Blackbeard because one, this is a shonen manga and Oda won't have the main character kill someone, and two, Oda stated in an SBS that Luffy doesn't kill his enemies so that they have to live with their dreams shattered. But regardless, Luffy aka Hanuman is gonna fight a three-headed demon named Three Siras aka Blackbeard. I also wonder if Zunesha is gonna play a large role in the final war, so let's talk about Zunesha. In Hindu religion, Hanuman had a friend named Ganesha. This friend Ganesha once had a full human body, but angered another god named Shiva. This god Shiva beheaded Ganesha and replaced his head with the first animal he saw. And can you guess what that very first animal he saw was? An elephant. If we apply this logic to One Piece, Zunesha was a human who was turned into an elephant. And this would make sense as Zunesha was the Nakama of Joy Boy at some point. So it's very well possible that Zunesha was a human crewmate of Joy Boy. Ganesha and Zunesha sound similar phonetically and sound similar story-wise. Hopefully we can see Zunesha come back during the final war to get revenge against Emu. But regardless, the War of Lanka fits One Piece's narrative and most popular theories perfectly. Monkey D. Luffy will fight a three-souled person named Blackbeard. Then he will fight a demonic king named Emu. And finally, One Piece will end with Luffy rescuing the first princess he befriended, Vivi. It all comes full circle. Have you ever noticed that Blackbeard wears the same exact type of hat that Robin's mom was shown wearing? Oda's about to show us why Blackbeard is the real demon of Ohara. When I say demon, I'm not talking about a metaphorical sense like Robin, but a literal demon. And I promise it proves why Blackbeard has multiple devil fruits, why he's able to read the poneglyphs, and why he's based on a creature that famously killed a quote unquote earthquake monster. The revelations you're about to experience today is going to change how you see Blackbeard in One Piece forever. I'm about to feed you the red pill behind the truth of Blackbeard and there's no turning back. By the end of this video, you are going to walk away with your jaw on the floor, so be prepared. Blackbeard is literally a demon and Oda is hiding this from you. To get this all started, there's loads of context clues Oda's given us to uncover the secrets behind Blackbeard. I'll be mentioning all the obvious ones, but most importantly, the obscure ones that you have to read in between the lines to understand. But before we jump into it, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more videos like this. So to start off, Robin's flashback holds a lot of key details, not only about the history of the world, but Blackbeard himself. In chapter 392, it was said that the Void Sentry is considered a taboo subject. And this dialogue sticks out to me, since we know from Sengoku, that Zebek was also interested in taboo subjects. Knowing Oda's writing style, I'd be led to believe one of these taboo subjects that Zebek was interested in was learning about the Void Century. And by extension, knowing Blackbeard has many ties to Zebek, Blackbeard himself would be interested in taboo subjects. So not only is Oda tying Blackbeard to Zebek, but now he's tying Blackbeard to the interests of Ohara. And then in chapter 393, Robin has interesting dialogue that further helps us connect Blackbeard with Ohara. Robin basically infers that archaeological research requires a person to go out to sea like her mother Olvia. And I think that's really, really important because we already know that Blackbeard is interested in archaeology. If you refer back to SBS Volume 81, Oda wrote how Blackbeard's favorite hobby is historical research. And then later in Volume 88, Oda said that if Blackbeard wasn't a pirate, he'd be an archaeologist. So by Oda's own words, it would make sense that Blackbeard is narratively tied to not only Ohara, but the research ships that left the island. And what further solidifies the idea that Blackbeard is connected to Ohara is something 
something you overlooked. Throughout Robin's flashback, Oda made it a point to give a ton of characters a cowboy hat as headwear. Robin eventually wore one, Jaguar wore one, random civilians wore them, hell, even CP9 members were wearing the cowboy hats. But the one fact that excites me is Olvia herself didn't wear a cowboy hat and instead wore the same exact type of hat that Kid Blackbeard was seen to wear. I strongly believe this is Oda's way of foreshadowing a connection between Blackbeard and Olvia, and for some reason he chose to symbolize this connection with a hat. And what makes this even crazier is throughout Robin's flashback, Oda repeatedly drills into the reader's head how Olvia's research team was captured six years prior to the Ohara incident. Like seriously, over and over and over again, he reminds you that it was six years ago specifically, which just so happens to be the same year that Blackbeard begged Whitebeard to let him on the ship. Knowing Oda's habits of making time sensitive events important, I believe that Olvia wasn't the only person who escaped the capture, but so was Blackbeard. And this would explain why Blackbeard has that beat up hat. He got it from his mother or father that died during the capture. It would also explain why Blackbeard was labeled as an orphan, because every time those research ships got captured, the researchers would end up being killed. And yes, I understand it's heavily implied that Blackbeard was born in a snow country, because in Odin's flashback, Kid Shanks and Buggy talked about how Blackbeard has never slept in his life. And this could be easily connected to the dialogue from Drum Island arc, where Sanji says that people from snow countries never sleep. Ah, all that with the fact that Ohara is not a snow country would seem to imply that Blackbeard wasn't born on Ohara specifically, but instead a snow country that the research team visited. But it's the same difference. The research team that left Ohara knew how to read and study poneglyphs and they went to a snow country and that's how Blackbeard was born. Now another interesting explanation about Blackbeard and his family lies in chapter 393. We are shown that Olvia's husband, aka Robin's dad, had wishes about learning the poneglyphs. But this scene in particular is important because it shows how Olvia was not the leader and the captain of the research ships. And in fact, there's tons of members in that team, which leaves plenty of room for Oda to make a member of that research team a Marshall D family member. Now also in chapter 393, Robin claims that her mother Olvia is learning about the Void Century during her travels around the ocean. Seeing how Blackbeard could easily be tied to that team, this would imply that Blackbeard knows a little bit about the Void Century himself. If he's so deeply interested in taboo subjects just like Zebek, I'd imagine that Blackbeard and Zebek would be fascinated over the Yami Yami no Mi due to its history from the Void Century. Personally, I don't think that's a reach at all considering that Blackbeard is interested in history and archaeology, so maybe he discovered the Yami Yami no Mi due to Void Century research. And the last piece of information for chapter 1 of 2 for this grand reveal about Blackbeard actually has to do with Luffy. So Luffy's based on Hanumanji aka Hanuman which is a monkey god in Hinduism. This was confirmed in chapter 1048 when Luffy did an attack to defeat Kaido called Bajrang Gun. And Bajrang is another name for Hanuman, the monkey god. But more importantly, in Road to Laugh Tale Volume 4, Oda literally has notes calling Luffy monkey god Hanuman. So from all the details we talked about in chapter 1, we can easily tie Blackbeard to the greatest enemy Hanuman ever faced, Three Sidas. Three Sidas was a three-headed Ashura that fought Hanuman in a great battle. And Ashuras are already a thing in One Piece anyways, as seen by Zoro's Ashura former attack. But it's important to clarify that an Ashura is another way of saying demon. Now you know how I said that Three Sidas is a three-headed Ashura, aka a three-headed demon? Each head actually has their own specific name and their own specific function for the body of Three Sidas. The first head was in charge of eating and drinking, and I believe Oda displayed this to us when we first met Blackbeard in Jaya's bar. The second head is in charge of observing surroundings, which I believe plays into Blackbeard being methodical. And the third and final head is in charge of reading the four Vidas, which is secret ancient text in Hinduism. I believe Oda's way of adding this to One Piece is by having Blackbeard being able to read the Poneglyphs. And this ties into everything we've said so far. Blackbeard clearly has a connection to Olvia and the research ships of Ohara. Now, the interesting thing about Three Sitters having three heads is it could correlate to Blackbeard having three personalities or three souls. And this would make sense because of details that we've seen in One Piece Magazine Volume 4, where Oda draws a shocked Ace seeing Blackbeard and his two sisters. This was concept art for Blackbeard and appeared to be scrapped, but I think Oda's idea was essentially to add two more souls to Blackbeard's already existing soul. And a lot of people would like to point out that Blackbeard's teeth changed from time to time, so that could be a factor in him having three souls, especially when you take into account what we already know about devil fruits. According to Jabra, once you eat a devil fruit, a devil inside of you begins fighting, which is why having two devil fruits should kill you. I believe what's implied 
applied here is because the typical person has one soul in their body to fight off one devil fruit. So if you had two souls, shouldn't you be able to fight off two devil fruits? Or even three souls, shouldn't you be able to fight off three devil fruits? Now I know this whole three souls thing is very vague right now, but I promise you by the end of this video, I'm going to give you concrete evidence why it's the case. And to quickly bring up, in chapter 394, it is said that the archaeologists of this world are actually demons who desire destruction, which is hilarious because if Blackbeard is based on three sedas, then one, that makes him an archaeologist, two, he's a demon, and three, he wants to bring destruction to the world, which in my opinion is already very obvious. So when we have moments where they call Robin the demon of O'Hara, I believe it's actually foreshadowing the Blackbeard because he will be the real, literal demon of O'Hara. Oh yeah, by the way, tinfoil fun fact, O'Hara's tree of knowledge is the same exact shape as the skull on Hachinosu Island and has the same exact windows as the skull on Hachinosu Island. But with all that being said, Oda has a trend where he gets two famous figures in real life, mixes them together, and creates a One Piece character out of them. For an example, Oda used Sun Wukong and Hanuman to create the character of Luffy. Seeing how Blackbeard is not only important to the general plot, but also the second side of the shared coin with Luffy, I can see the same case being for Blackbeard. Meaning, Blackbeard is heavily inspired by two figures, and the first one was Hinduism's Three Sidas. But then that begs the question, who is the second inspiration? And can it answer why he has multiple devil fruits? The One Piece community is huge and there's millions of fans around the world trying to decipher all the mysteries in the story. But one fan that needs their shine is Yasin B on Reddit. Due to their love for One Piece and all the historical research they did, I have a lot of groundbreaking truths I'm so excited to present to you today. So major shout out to Yasin B for some of these discoveries and work done on Blackbeard. So laughs in One Piece are super important and they are represented by a character's devil fruit assuming they have one. For an example, Whitebeard. <laughs> Gura da 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 is represented by him having the Gura Gura no Mi. Perona <laughs> is represented by her having the Hodo Hodo no Mi. And then you even have minor characters like Strusen. <laughs> Cuckoo Cuckoo Cuckoo, represented by him having the Cuckoo Cuckoo no Mi. But what about Blackbeard's laugh? <laughs> Not only is he one of the most iconic and important characters in the entire story, but he also has the most iconic laugh in all of One Piece. Following this pattern that Oda laid out, I'd be led to believe that Blackbeard's fruit would be the Ziha Ziha no Mi. But how could we make that make any sense? Well, in Chinese mythology, there's an insanely interesting creature known as the Baize. And the Baize was then adopted into Japanese mythology as well under the name of Hakutaku. Now, if you take the two last letters of Baize and add it to the first two letters of Hakutaku, you end up with Zeha. So basically, the same creature with two separate names would be the reason why Blackbeard's laughter is Zeha ha ha ha. Now, before you click off this video thinking it's a coincidence and I'm reaching, I suggest you buckle your seatbelts because all the facts and details behind the Baize is going to blow your mind. In Chinese mythology, the Baize is described as a tiger, sheep, and lion because it is a creature with three different faces. Comparing what the Baize is depicted as to Black Blackbeard's Jolly Roger, the similarities between the two is absolutely uncanny. They look way too similar and I can see Blackbeard crafting his flag to look this way because he ate the Hito Hito no Mi model Zeha. Do you see how this is coming together? And if you're still not convinced, that's fine. I have plenty more shocking details to talk about. Another interesting design of the Baize is the fact that it has several horns and each of the faces has three eyes. I find that to be important because One Piece already toyed around with the idea of people having three eyes, in this case, the three-eyed tribe. The special thing about the tribe is members have the ability to hear the voice of all things, which unlocks potential in reading the poneglyphs. Even though the means of awakening the third eye is relatively unknown, it doesn't matter, the result is the same. Big Mom's daughter Pudding might be the only member we know about so far, but I can see Blackbeard once again being a hack by having a third eye. Not only would there be a narrative purpose for that, but it would also fit the Chinese legend of the Baize. Another groundbreaking fact about the Baize is it has three souls. And that's a long-running theory about Blackbeard, the idea that he is a character with three souls in his body. And we already explored that idea earlier, so I won't harp on it much longer. Another fact about Baize we can apply to One Piece doesn't only have to do with Blackbeard, but with Shanks as well. So as everyone knows, the scar that Shanks got was from a fight with Blackbeard that Shanks claims he was very careful in. He wasn't letting his guard down, and it's pretty much heavily implying that Blackbeard did something very unexpected that allowed him to scar Shanks. Now, a lot of people would attribute the scar that Shanks has to the claws that Blackbeard's been seen using, but I would have to disagree for a few reasons. In Odin's flashback, 
we saw Young Shanks and Buggy gossiping about Blackbeard, and at this point, Blackbeard already had those claws. So for those claws to somehow become a big factor in their fight many years down the line, it seems kind of odd to me. Not only that, but the claw's inconsistent seeing how sometimes it has three knives on it and sometimes it has four. Seeing how the claw isn't that strong of an argument, I believe the Baize having a tiger form could answer how Blackbeard managed to scar Shanks. By randomly switching into the tiger form, it would catch careful Shanks off guard, allowing him to scar the future emperor. Now the Baize also has physical features that are already present in current day Blackbeard, that being the swirly and curly beard that Blackbeard's rocking. Comparing the two side by side, it's definitely something that stands out to me and would make a lot of sense that Oda chose to give Blackbeard a beard like that if he did in fact have ties to Baize. Now the next detail had me absolutely sold on this idea, it was my absolute tipping point. According to Chinese mythology, Baize was described as killing an earthquake yokai, or in other words, an earthquake monster. This earthquake yokai was said to shake the earth when he was angry and wants to attack. The first thing that immediately came to your mind is the fact that Blackbeard killed an earthquake yokai already. In this case, the yokai was Whitebeard and he had this earthquake ability due to eating an earthquake devil fruit. So Blackbeard having a Baize devil fruit would relate to the legend by him killing an earthquake yokai known as Whitebeard. Now the legend of Baize has way more interesting details but I need a second to collect myself cause now the meaning of Baize in Japanese kanji is White Marsh, which is actually the names of two different characters that related to each other, but one of them kills the other. In this case, it would be Whitebeard and Blackbeard. Not only is it in their beard nicknames, but it actually goes way deeper than that. So there's an actual pirate in real life that inspired the creation of Blackbeard, and his name is spelled as Edward Teach, but pronounced as Edward Thatch. The facts behind this matter is that Oda took this famous pirate and split him up into three different characters, Edward Newgate, Thatch, and Marshall D. Teach. Now remember, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because the White Marsh was known to kill someone related to him. So Oda portrayed this by having Blackbeard kill Whitebeard. And we're still not done, I have another cracked out detail about the Baize that actually correlates with Blackbeard's vast knowledge about the world. According to Chinese legend, Baize dictated to Huang Dai, a guide to the forms and habits of all 11,520 types of supernatural creatures in the world and how to overcome their hauntings and attacks. You're probably wondering why I'm bringing this up, you're probably wondering what this has to do with anything. Well. Remember how Blackbeard fought Ace? In that battle, Blackbeard mentions how he knows all forms of devil fruits from reading the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Blackbeard is by Ze, the Huang Dai guide in this case would be the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, and all those creatures, all those hauntings, all those attacks in the book would be the devil fruits in one piece. That's a little too ironic, huh? And this also ties into why Blackbeard and his crew have been chasing devil fruits this whole time. We see this over and over again, like the fact that Blackbeard was targeting the Yami Yami no Mi for many years, or even how they manipulated Absalom in order to get sure you the clear clear fruit. To me it seems very clear that this vast knowledge about devil fruits from Blackbeard derives from the Baize reading the Huang Dai guide. Now the icing on the cake for this whole Baize theory is the idea of Blackbeard having three devil fruits by the time he fights Luffy. His Logia would be the Yami Yami no Mi, his Paramecia would be the Gura Gura no Mi, and his Zoan will be the Ziha Ziha no Mi, creating a pattern of three present in Blackbeard by having all three devil fruit categories. Oh my god. So what did we learn today. There is a 99.99999% chance that Blackbeard is a mix between three Sidas from Hindu mythology and Baize from Chinese mythology. If this theory video blew your mind, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more videos like this. And if you're interested in the secrets behind Mihawk, I have a video to my side you definitely gotta check out. But besides that, it's the Demon King and I'm signing out. Blackbeard is the biological clone of Rocksteady's Beck and it's all Vegapunk's fault. Thanks to One Piece Chapter 1072, we now have endless lore to explore. Not only is Kuma still climbing the red line, but Bonnie found Kuma's memories. Like trust me, the lore in this chapter goes very, very deep. But what I want to focus on today is what happens at the tail end of chapter 1072, Stussy. Apparently the deep dark truth of the chapter is that Stussy is a biological clone, and that would make Stussy based off of a former rocks pirate known as Bakken. If Bakken seems familiar to you then perfect, that'll make explaining why Blackbeard is a clone a lot easier. Basically everything we've seen about Bakken is she's obsessed with money and Weevil. Low key, she reminds me of Mr. Krabs because her personality doesn't really go beyond that moolah. It's so bad to the point that Bakken has literally been hunting down Whitebeard and his remnants for year after year. But aside her obsession with money, there's one more other thing she cares about in the One Piece world. Weevil. Now Weevil's said to be the biological son of Bakken, but we don't actually know how true that really is. I believe the science group Mads actually created Weevil. Like take a close look at Weevil, look at his appearance. There's stitches all over him that's very reminiscent of 
ores and all the zombies at Thriller Bark. Not only that, but Weevil seems to be the combination of multiple pirates. Like, haven't you noticed that Weevil has traits similar to Whitebeard, Shiki, and Kaido? For an example, look at Weevil from behind. Pause. Doesn't it seem like he has the same exact hair as Shiki? There's even a moment in the anime where they show the back of Weevil, and a lot of people thought it was Shiki. No, it was Weevil. He was one of the warlords at the time. Then when you just look at the front of Weevil, you can see he has the same hat as Whitebeard, and he has the same kind of fighting style. Then the final touches of Weevil's character is he has the same legs and lips as Kaido. So it seems like Oda is going the route to say that Weevil was the combination of Shiki's DNA, Whitebeard's DNA, and Kaido's DNA. But the most fascinating detail we know about Weevil is his age. It is said that Weevil is 35 years old. If Bakken was cloned by Mads to create Stussy and Bakken slash Stussy have a relation to Mads, then I believe that Mads had their hands in creating Weevil. And if that was true, that would mean that Mads was created at least 35 years ago, which makes a lot of sense. There's not too many details that go off of when it comes to Mads, and there's only one detail when it comes to a time period. We know that Mads was created at least 24 years ago. So it's very likely when Mads was formed 35 years ago, they created Weevil, and then 11 years later is when they kind of dissolved. What further backs up this case is a recent cover of the Mads group. We see Vegapunk on the cover and he looks extremely young. We can compare this version of Vegapunk to the one at Ohara to really see how young he is. We know the Ohara incident took place 22 years ago. So if we give Vegapunk's current age 65 and subtract 22 for the Ohara incident, then that means he was 43 at that time. But the cover of Mads where we see young Vegapunk, he looks so much younger. I would argue that that version of Vegapunk is at least 30 at the maximum. He doesn't have a mustache, his head's a lot shorter. This is a younger version of Vegapunk. And knowing that Vegapunk and Judge are the overall Mads group it was messing with lineage factors to create clones, it would make sense that the Mads group again had their hands in creating Weevil. But the key detail here is that Weevil is the combination of multiple rocks pirates. Now that we have all that out the way, let's pivot into a different topic, Blackbeard. One interesting thing we know about Blackbeard is that he's 40 years old. This would mean that Blackbeard was born five years before Mads was created or since Weevil was born. And this also means that Blackbeard was born two years before the God Valley incident. So now we kind of have a timeline. Blackbeard was born, two years later the God Valley incident took place, and then three more years later Mads was created. Now let's take a moment to look at Vegapunk because there's key signs in his history that tell us about Blackbeard and the experiments. One thing we know about Vegapunk is he's from Kawakuri Island. This is the same exact island that Professor Tsukimi's from and this is the same exact island that Frankie went to during the time skip. It is said during Vegapunk's young adulthood he left Katakuri because he was lacking skills and funding. This to me seems like he needed more people surrounding him so he left Karakuri and then created the Mad Science Group. But one important speculation I have about Karakuri Island is I believe Zebek went to it in the past and he met Vegapunk. This would then create the first Rox Pirates experiment. Perhaps Vegapunk met Roxy Zebek back in the day there and Vegapunk was still a legendary scientist at that time. Zebek could have extorted Vegapunk to create a clone of himself to dominate the world because that was Zebek's whole goal. He wanted to become king of the world. So if Zebek knew there was a scientist that could possibly clone him, that could possibly alter his body for world domination, Zebek would take the chance. I know this might seem a little confusing and speculative right now, but I promise by the end of the video, you will love this. Just like how I would love if you hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell to never miss the best One Piece theory videos on YouTube. But refocusing back onto Blackbeard, I have the belief that he was born on Karakuri Island. Now, let me explain. During the Drum Kingdom arc, Luffy and Sanji were getting chased by these snow rabbits. During their conversation, Luffy tells Sanji that people from snow countries never sleep. Keeping that in mind, let's fast forward 800 chapters after that. During the Odin flashback, Buggy and Shanks were having a conversation about Blackbeard. And at this moment, Buggy told Shanks that Blackbeard has never slept in his life. I believe these two items are connected and it's a very simple assumption. If Blackbeard has never slept in his life and people from snow countries never sleep, then you could assume that Blackbeard is from a snow country. And if we circle back, we know that Vegapunk is from Karakuri Island. And it is a concrete fact that Karakuri Island is a snow country, it is a winter island. So the probability that Blackbeard is from Karakuri Island is very high. Now there's one more clue that backs up the case that Blackbeard's from Karakuri Island and it has to do with his depiction as a child. Way back in the day, Oda drew all the warlords as children, but let's focus on the one for Blackbeard. Oda drew Blackbeard crying underneath the moon. Can we relate this to Karakuri Island in any kind of way? Yes. The interesting thing about Karakuri Island is Professor Tsukimi is from there. In case you don't remember him, this was the scientist that was in NL's cover story. If you check Professor Tsukimi's wiki, it seems like his name translates to Moon Watcher. Now it's very ironic, like why is he so obsessed with the moon? Not only that, all the automatas, all the robots he was working on, we saw on the moon. So it seems like there's some kind of inherent connection between Karakuri Island and its residents with the moon. So seeing how Oda drew Blackbeard underneath the moon 
crying. Perhaps this is a minor clue that he comes from a country that seems to care about the moon. But the second key detail is the fact that Blackbeard is crying in the picture. If Oda's gonna draw Blackbeard as a kid crying, this is implying that Blackbeard had a tragic history. Under the idea that Blackbeard is a failed clone, he's a failed experiment of Roxy Zebek, this could have him have a tragic backstory. He could be labeled as a test subject, an accident, a demon, which is eerily similar to what happened during Robin's flashback. We know all the kids in Ohara made fun of her, they hated on her. I'd imagine something similar could happen to Blackbeard. He has a tragic backstory in the snow country of Karakuri because he's a failed clone of Zebek. This would obviously cause him to feel alienated, even to the point where he flees Karakuri Islands and he goes to an island like, I don't know, Jaya, which just so happens to be near Karakuri Island. Coincidence? I think not. But anyways, during Odin's flashback, we see that young Blackbeard running away. He's about 12 years old at this time and it seems like he was labeled as an orphan. Now remember, if he's a failed clone of Zebek as a kid, of course he would be an orphan. So what does he do? He runs to Whitebeard, gets picked up in the crew, and he looks for the Yami Yami no Mi. But to back up a little bit and to have a quick recap, there's interesting symbolism and parallels that Oda's using at play here. Blackbeard would essentially be the failed clone of Roxy Zebek made by Vegapunk, much like how Momonosuke ate the failed clone fruit of Kaido's Devil Fruit because of Vegapunk. Like think about it, if Oda went out of his way to say that Vegapunk failed multiple times with Momonosuke's fruit, maybe this is hinting this is not the first mistake or the first failure Vegapunk experienced. Now with all that out the way, let's refocus back onto Bakken because I have an interesting detail that I noticed. When I read chapter 1072, it was mind blowing to see that Stussy is a clone of Bakken. This actually influenced me to go on the One Piece wiki and do plenty of research when it comes to Bakken. Now one thing that jumped out at me and it was not forced is the fact that Bakken has these colorful rings much similar to how Blackbeard does. Again, this isn't something that I forced, it kind of jumped out at me and it caught my eye. I was like, wait, they're both wearing colorful rings? I can't really think of other characters in One Piece that do that, but furthermore, we know that Bakken also wears two pearl necklaces at a time, just like Blackbeard does. So from a fashion perspective, it seems like Bakken and Blackbeard relate, but I think this is purely intentional because Oda's trying to make Bakken the foil character of Blackbeard. What I mean is, Bakken is the inversion of Blackbeard. Like take a moment to think about it. Bakken is the root of a clone named Stussy, and I'm arguing that Blackbeard is the clone of the root named Roxy Zebek, which would mean that Blackbeard and Bakken are inversions. But anyways, let's refocus back onto Blackbeard. If he's a failed clone of Zebek, that would explain why he has a severely altered body. Like during Marine Ford, we know that Marco says that Blackbeard has a weird body. Not only that, but if Blackbeard has a weird body because he's a failed clone, it would explain why Blackbeard's able to eat two devil fruits. A failed experiment of a human, a gone wrong body, these two items are connected. Blackbeard has two devil fruits because he has a weird body, and he has a weird body because he's a failed clone of Zebek. And I wouldn't be surprised if Blackbeard being a failed clone also messed with his body biology or even his hockey. Because think back to the Jaya art. When Luffy and Zoro first met Blackbeard, Zoro referred to Blackbeard as more than one. If Blackbeard's the failed clone of Zebek, perhaps there's a reason why Zoro said that. Or even circling back to Buggy, Buggy said that Blackbeard's life has been twice as fun. On the surface level, it seems like Buggy is saying that because Blackbeard never sleeps. If you never sleep, there's more hours in the day for you to have fun, so of course Buggy would say that. But if Blackbeard turns out to be the clone of Zebek, then that Buggy statement has a lot more depth. Now Blackbeard being a failed clone of Zebek could also influence his personality and all of his knowledge about the One Piece world. Like think about it, Blackbeard's a smart calculated man. He even sat there waiting for Luffy Lara Kid so he could snatch Poneglyphs. Not only that, Blackbeard said that he made this whole big master plan even when he was on the Whitebeard pirate ship. Like Blackbeard seems to know the true value of Devil Fruits and physical power in the One Piece world. Some people even argue that Blackbeard orchestrated everything at Marine Ford War. So Blackbeard's whole personality, his whole makeup, it seems like he knows way too much. How would he know way too much? If he was a failed clone of Zebek, maybe he inherited knowledge and that personality. But the funny thing about Blackbeard is he relates to Zebek even in cases where it doesn't even help him. For an example, Blackbeard's ship is called the Saber of Zebek. Now if you go on the One Piece wiki, Roxy Zebek's name is likely derived from the real life pirate Roche Brasiliano, which in English translates to Rock the Brazilian from his long exile in Brazil. So the interesting thing about this real life pirate is it could be connected to Blackbeard's ship. Now the very clever thing to do here is take into account that Roche Brasiliano is from Brazil. The number one language of Brazil is Portuguese. So if you take the phrase Saber of Zebek, throw it into Google Translate for Portuguese, it translates to English, know of Zebek. Or in other words, Blackbeard knows of Zebek. Now the icing on the cake is we know a Zebek is a type of Mediterranean ship. So even if you go down the rabbit hole of translating Saber of Zebek from Spanish to English, it still ends up at know of Zebek. So all in all, Blackbeard knowing of Zebek has very strong legs to stand on. Quick little shout out to my Discord server, Discord. 
gg slash 333vil where i'm always posting hot takes fresh new theories and sneak peeks to videos if you're too lazy to type in this very easy url there's a link in the description join today but there's one more question we have to answer how does blackbeard know about the name of zebek whitebeard for an example seems nothing like zebek whitebeard's a family man and he values and loves his men whereas zebek is a captain where his crewmates quite literally were killing each other i don't see why whitebeard will tell blackbeard about zebek or especially in any kind of glorifying way think about zebek for a second zebek has been wiped from history the world government doesn't want his name or legend anywhere but if blackbeard grew up knowing he was a failed clone of zebek that could explain why blackbeard knows of zebek and one other thing we have to call into question is blackbeard's territory we know that blackbeard defeated marco during the payback war this gave blackbeard access to countless countries but for some reason he chose to make hachinosu island his home base and you know what's special about hachinosu island this is where the rocks pirates are formed why would blackbeard go through such lengths to relate to roxy zebek i think it's because he's the failed clone of roxy zebek another key detail takes place during marine ford war when blackbeard was going crazy he said he wanted to make his own age yeah it's kind of vague and kind of broad but i believe this could relate to zebek not too long ago marines told us that before it was roger's time it was theirs this is referring to the rocks pirates this infers that roxy zebek had his own pirate age just like how blackbeard's trying to achieve so perhaps the zebek dna used to make blackbeard went horribly wrong and this explains blackbeard's true nature it would explain why blackbeard relates to roxy zebek so much now let's take a step back and let's look at the bigger picture is oda showing us roxy zebek and the rocks pirates this late into the story because he's preparing us to see about blackbeard to me it makes sense oda could do a two-in-one we learn about roxy zebek while simultaneously realizing that blackbeard's the failed clone of him so with that being said let's actually pivot into a different character a different topic shanks recently it was revealed that in volume 4 billion shanks is a baby from god valley and we know that shanks was raised by a pirate who worked with garp to defeat rocks roger did roger ever talk to shanks about where he's from what happens there god valley i believe this is very likely wouldn't it seem kind of odd if we end the one piece story and shanks doesn't know about zebek it would be really cool for this to be the truth when you think about shanks fighting blackbeard it's a possibility that when shanks fought blackbeard back in the day blackbeard revealed that he was the return of zebek or something to that capacity hearing or seeing proof of that could have shook shanks so much to the point he was caught off guard and got scarred i'd imagine back then clones in one piece weren't commonplace let alone a roxy zebek clone now leaving alone the topic of shanks let's talk about the lurking legend most one piece fans think the lurking legend is either emu or roxy zebek but in jump festa oda mentioned that the straw hats will be fighting against the lurking legend of the one piece world and soon after that the rocks pirates were finally name dropped in the manga and then after that we learned a little bit about zebek and the god valley incident if blackbeard is the clone of zebek and zebek is the lurking legend then technically the straw hats will be fighting zebek or the lurking legend straw hat pirates versus the clone of roxy zebek the lurking legend blackbeard and who knows maybe we'll be getting some answers very soon because we know that garp is about to fight blackbeard with all the relations from blackbeard to zebek garp will surely see zebek inside of blackbeard so maybe garp will see the same thing that shocked shanks and caught shanks off guard now if this theory is true if blackbeard is the failed clone of zebek then this adds way more depth to ace versus blackbeard ace's father roger is the reason zebek died or was captured or whatever his fate was for blackbeard to fight ace even if it was totally by fate is a beautiful twist of fate it is essentially blackbeard getting revenge against ace so when luffy defeats blackbeard not only will it be revenge for ace but it'll also be luffy following in the footsteps of roger because in short the two pirate kings of the one piece world luffy and roger will have both fought and defeated roxy zebek thank you so much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell down below i have four videos on screen banger theories make sure to check them out i have a lot of good content on my channel but that's about it see ya